Hello and welcome to WePC. My name is Jack and today we're going to be taking a look at a relatively new technology from Nvidia, DLAA. No, no, not DLSS. It's similar, but not quite. DLAA stands for Deep Learning Anti-Aliasing and promises to breathe new life into older games in the way of increased visual fidelity. Well, as of right now, it's only available to be used on ESO, as it's the only game that supports it. So, good news if you're an ESO player. Before we get into it, can I please ask that you like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the video. It really helps us out. Great. With that out of the way, what the heck is DLAA and how does it work? Let's start with DLAA's bigger brother, DLSS. DLSS has been around for a while now, offering a boost in frame rates and performance by rendering games at lower resolutions, and then using AI to upscale the image to the desired resolution. Pretty smart stuff. DLSS can offer performance increases, allowing much less powerful GPUs to manage more demanding titles. DLAA works in a similar fashion, utilising similar machine learning with the sole aim of increasing the smoothness and fidelity of your game's graphics beyond your standard, more straightforward approach to anti-aliasing, such as temporal anti-aliasing. The technology is currently in the testing stages, and it can be trialled, as I mentioned earlier, in Elder Scrolls Online, a seven-year-old title. What sort of performance can you expect to get out of DLAA? Is it an increase or a hit in FPS? Let's take a look. As you can see in the comparison on screen, I'm using the 2070 Super here in 4K, just to make sure the technology works on 20 series GPUs as well. We're getting vastly different FPS numbers here. Standard temporal anti-aliasing, giving us an FPS average of 70 FPS. DLSS on the quality setting gives us a 99 FPS average. As to be expected, DLSS is pretty fine-tuned for increasing performance nowadays. And DLAA coming in at, well, 64 FPS an 8.5% decrease over temporal. Does it even look better? We'll, we'll get into that in a minute. But to me, this kind of makes sense, especially in the testing phase DLAA is currently in. TAA is a pretty tried and tested render option for anti-aliasing, whereas DLAA, despite it also being brand new, has to insert a whole other step into the rendering process, the machine learning. So essentially, the GPU has to wait for the AI to output whatever calculations it needs before the GPU can draw what's currently on screen and add a little more load onto the GPU as well, over the standard temporal anti-aliasing. So the performance hit, at least to me, is to be expected. But does it look the part? Here side by side, we can definitely see some differences here, with DLSS for me looking the worst, very blurry in my opinion, and both TAA and DLAA looking very similar. Let's move to a swipe between DLAA and TAA to see if we can discern any notable differences. TAA is up first, and DLAA is going to swipe across the screen slowly. Pay close attention to all of the leaves on the trees and the brickwork on the buildings in the far distance. I can only really see a slight difference from afar, and it's way easier to tell up close what's going on. But I have to say both TAA and DLAA are very close, and it's kind of hard to tell what's better to be honest. Hopefully with later iterations of DLAA, we'll be able to see some clearer differences in large open scenes. Moving on to distant objects, please note this faraway building. Here you can definitely see DLAA coming out on top, with the visual clarity of the brick building being far greater than DLSS. But again, I'm struggling to see a huge difference between TAA and DLAA. We are in 1080p here, as aliasing is far easier to show in lower resolutions. We can really see DLAA at work here, using AI to handle the anti-aliasing aspect of the render, and it's doing a pretty good job of it. Here we are with standard TAA and DLAA side by side. So you can see just how well this works. Most notably, the upper rim of the building where the building meets the background is far less jagged and somewhat smoother than even the standard temporal anti-aliasing. Maybe? It's still very hard to tell but you can definitely see DLAA at work, especially compared to DLSS. But at least with DLSS, you do get a performance uplift. The worst visuals are justified. But if DLAA looks the same as TAA and performs worse, then what's the point? Good question. I don't know this for fact, but here's my two cents. DLAA 
was conceptualized to breathe new life into older games that are stuck with space age render methods like ESO that happens to be a seven year old game. Yes, seven. So DLAA aims to tackle one of the larger problems older games have and that is aliasing. And DLAA aims to tackle it with AI. So it'll never be a cut and paste render method. It's always going to be learning and improving over the standard, more linear methods of anti-aliasing. However, because the technology is in early stages of development, it's not yet fully optimized and does chug a little when you try and use it. That's fine. Remember how bad DLSS 1.0 was compared to DLSS 2.0? My guess is things will only improve. Performance might also be a bit better for other games when there's support for them. I can't really call it a fair test with a sample size of one game. I do hope DLAA takes off. It's an amazing idea and really will breathe some new life into some older titles. It's just a shame that as of right now, it's not yet optimized enough to consider using. But hey, like I said, as of right now, it's only available on the Elder Scrolls Online PTS anyway. Well, that's about it. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you got something from this. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And make sure to check out Charles's article on WePC if you want to stay up to date on DLAA's development. This has been Jack from WePC. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.